Hi, I'm Samantha Salmon, Certified Brain Optimization Coach. And today we're going to be talking about something really, really interesting. I got a comment on one of my YouTube videos from a woman saying, I'm high raw and low fat vegan, vegan for animals, high raw for health, who eats between 2,100 and 2,600 calories, mostly coming from fruits. I only eat cooked for dinner and a mix of raw cooked vegetables with rice, sweet potato, or quinoa. I track my calories on chronometer and my fat and my fat is never above 10%. And the same goes for protein. I'm still getting skin breakouts and I'm gaining weight. I don't know what to do, any advice or idea why this might happen. This is a really, really great, valuable question. A couple of things that stand out to me is uh, the consumption of 2,100 to 2,600 calories tells me if you really need that much um, calories, then you must be an athlete. Either you're a bodybuilder looking to feed those muscles and you're trying to gain a lot of muscle mass uh, with that amount of energy, or maybe you're a marathon runner. So you need a lot of energy to fuel your, uh, your, your runs and your training that you're doing on a daily basis, which takes a lot of energy. That's the only reason why I could think that you would be at these levels in terms of calorie consumption, you have to be maybe some kind of athlete or something like that. Uh, I personally don't eat at that level. I typically stay around 1500 and that's for me and my body. Obviously, um, I'm not looking at you personally, what's going on with you. So this may be um, a legit number that your body needs that 2100 to 2600. Um, so that's the first thing that kind of steps out at me. And then thinking about that, okay, if you are an athlete and eating this amount of calories, um, it's possible. I mean, typically athletes, uh, you know, their body has, has been trained and has gotten used to the training. So it's not inducing a stress response, I would think. But, um, if you're one of the things like, you know, as I'm looking, you're gaining weight and your skin is breaking out, which tells me there has to be maybe some kind of hormonal imbalance. Typically when my skin um, has broken out, it's before my menstrual. So my hormones are um, a little funny. They're doing a funny thing. Um, or I, um, or this product that I've used on my face, sometimes an exfoliant, and that tends to break me out this product in particular. Um, so, but typically it's weight gain and a skin reaction, skin breakout, this I'm, I'm leaning in on, on hormones. Um, so aside from just getting your hormones checked, maybe talking to your doc doctor and running labs on your hormones to make sure everything is looking good and it's all in balance. Um, you may want to incorporate, uh, some stress relieving, um, workouts or routines into your uh, training so that your body's not feeling so stressed. These are some of the things that are just kind of, you know, glaring out at me. Um, but I'm going to run through some 10 things to think about, right? One, eat more green. So uh, personally, like I said, I don't eat um, the level of calories that you eat, right? Uh, for my body, I wouldn't do that. But for anyone who is looking to release fat, because it looks like you are trying, you are gaining weight that you don't want to gain, right? Which means that you're most likely eating um, uh, more than you need, not necessarily most likely, other than the hormonal issue. It could be that you're eating more than you need for your bodily needs, which is why I start with TDEE, -E, your total daily energy expenditure, figure out what that number is, and then make adjustments based on what my goals are. And so for me in particular, if I was looking to lose excess fat, then I would uh, calculate my TDEE -E and uh, be at a slight deficit, not too dramatic because I don't want my metabolic set point to, uh, down regulate, right? I don't, I don't want it to uh, like adjust where, um, you know, it drops and then it, it'll, it'll make losing, trying to lose excess fat even harder for me. I would rather move more than cut calories, right? Um, 
and send my body into like a starvation mode or whatever. So uh, anyway, so I would do that. The way I do that is eating greens because greens have high protein and low energy, right? It's low calorie, high protein, high micronutrients. If you notice, regardless of what diet folks are on, everyone who is releasing excess fat is doing it by eating more greens, okay? Um, number two, diversify your diet. So outside of eating more greens, you want to rotate those greens, rotate your fruits because you want a healthy gut microbiome. If you're having skin issues, um, then it could be from, like I said, hormonal balance. It could be from the gut microbiome, just not being well, right? It could be in a state of dysbiosis and how do you heal and repair the gut? You want to make sure that you're getting a div diversity of plant nutrients, um, so I would rotate my greens and my fruits. Number three, I would make sure I'm drinking sufficient amounts of water. You're consuming a lot of fruits, which is great. Um, that tells me that you are probably way more hydrated than most people. But for, for me, I feel like if you are eating any kind of cooked foods, which tends to be dehydrating, and then we're adding salt to the cooked food to make it taste good, which again is dehydrating, I make sure that I drink at least half my body weight in ounces of water, um, even with that level, you know, of fruit consumption. Um, all of these things that I'm talking about help to support, like hydration helps to support uh, hormonal balance as well. Um, and also keep excess fat down. Because a lot of times we think we're hungry and we're not really hungry, it's we're, we're dehydrated. Um, number four, again, back to the TDEE, monitor that caloric intake. You know, sometimes we can go overboard with the fruits, with the rice, with whatever. And I find that the way to really mitigate this, um, is by yes, eating a lot of greens, but me personally, I like to, um, play around with intermittent fasting. You know, I find it's really great for my body, but also kind can help to regulate because, um, we are just living in a time where it's so easy to impulsively eat. Even if you're eating all the right clean foods, I mean, I would, if you're going to impulsively eat, definitely impulsively eat on fruit. Right. Um, but if you find yourself in this situation where, uh, skin is breaking out, that tells me, okay, hormones need balancing, maybe the gut microbiome and, uh, and I'm gaining weight. Okay do a gut reset, maybe a 24 hour water fast, reset the gut microbiome. And that will naturally have you in a little bit of a caloric deficit, but not enough to, to drop metabolism, right? You're just, you're, um, I like this terminology that Dr. Mindy Pell says when she says, uh, uh, metabolic switching, like the metabolic flexibility, right? Doing that once in a while is really great for your uh, metabolism. So to just rev it up, get things burning and moving, you know, um, and it just could kind of give you a, like a reset on whatever's been going on, right? That kind of triggered um, all of what's, you know, the breakouts and the, the fat accumulation. Um, so that's helpful. Now, number five, like I've mentioned, improving gut health. And another thing that I haven't mentioned in particular with the gut health, though, is including maybe some fermented foods to support your gut, like sauerkraut, kimchi, um, or maybe even some plant-based yogurt. Um, you can also um, utilize uh, probiotics or like digestive enzymes, you know, because it, it could be a leaky gut situation. If you're dealing with leaky gut, then yes, you would have skin breakouts, right? You could have hormonal disruption from this. So, um, you know, really focusing on repairing the gut would be something I would pay attention to. Number six, reducing the stress. Okay. So incorporating some meditation, incorporating some mindfulness practice, um, Maybe switching up, like if you are not an athlete, but you just love working out at that level, maybe you want to kind of look at that again, right? Like just relook at your workout routine and see how you can incorporate um, some more 
calmer activities to calm down your nervous system, maybe walking more, doing some yoga, like restorative yoga or something like this to just reduce the stress on your body. Number seven, make sure you sleep. If you're sleeping less than seven hours, that will disrupt hormonal balance um, and cause weight gain. Um, and um, so you want to make sure you're getting at least seven to nine hours of sleep a night. Um, number eight, limit process, like eliminate processed foods. Some of us cannot afford to have any processed foods, just one chip and our body is moving in the wrong direction, right? And for most of us, it's not just one chip, it will be a whole bag, you know? So like we cannot afford even like a cookie, you know, some of us just cannot afford to eat any of these things. So when you see a packaged product with a whole bunch of ingredients, right? It's not just a bag of quinoa or a bag of beans. You just say, this is not food. I can't eat it. I can't afford to eat it. My body does not know how to metabolize this properly. It's sending my hormones like out of whack. Um, I cannot eat it. So I would just turn against processed foods completely. Okay. Just eliminate it. Um, and, uh, number nine hormonal health. So we, I mentioned this already, maybe go to the doctor and run those labs, just make sure everything is balanced. And if not focus in on balancing out your hormones, um, keep a, a journal of, you know, how things are progressing. I like to keep a health journal with, if I'm eating something new, or if I'm trying a new dietary thing, or even with my workouts, I keep I keep record of that, like what I'm doing, how I'm feeling, um, how things are progressing with my goals, like keep record so you're aware of what's affecting what. Um, but in terms of hormonal balance, you know, for women, we need about two tablespoons of flax seeds a day. We need to eat lots of leafy greens. Eating berries is also helpful and essential. You wanna avoid endocrine disruptors, in plastic, so like eliminate the plastics, eliminate plastic containers, um, make sure you have glass containers to store food or whatever in, um, and really check your personal care products, right? Because um, those, those can cause um, hormonal imbalance as well. And then my last and final tip is personalize attention, right? So other than going to the doctor, running your labs, you might need some personalized coaching. Like I said, there's a lot of assumptions that I'm making about you uh, based off of this information here, which a lot of folks could be dealing with at a variety of different um, calorie consumptions and different diets and things like this. So this is where it's really helpful to get a coach. And um, if you're interested in getting personalized coaching and attention on your health issue, definitely visit rawfoodmealplanner.com and go to book a consultation or book a co coaching call uh, with me. Um, and we could talk about, you know, what's going on with you and how coaching could help you help you get to the health goal that you're looking to achieve. Have a great day. I look forward to connecting with you soon.